In this how-to series, I'm going to cover some administration basics within uh, the virtual identity server. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to look at here is notice uh, one of the things you can do is stop and start the virtual identity server in the persisted cache from directly in the management console. And that would actually be starting and stopping the services that were configured at uh, installation time of the virtual identity server as well as the persisted cache. Um, you'll notice here that they're actually not showing up uh, as being configured, um, but they are in there in, in uh, control panel services. And that's because I need to configure them here. Um, they're normally done at install times. It looks like somebody may have gone in there and changed this. So I'm actually going to go ahead and, and make that change here. But let's cover some of these other buttons first. Up at the top, you'll see Manage Product Licenses. Uh, this shows which licenses uh, you have, uh, the expiration date you can see. I have uh, VIS Enterprise, LDAP Manager, and these are good until August 31st, 2011. So uh, if uh, your license expires, of course, you would need to get a new one, and that's actually uh, here in the Optimal IDM license. You would just copy down the new license file that you got from support, restart the services, and you're up and running, or restart the application as well if it's the management console. So nice, easy uh, way to see your licenses, though, right here through the GUI. Uh, let's go to this Manage App Config. Now, VIS itself, or the management console, rather, connects to VIS itself. And you'll notice here I am connecting to the local host, the local instance of VIS over on port 8389. I'm connecting in as a Forest One administrator account. Uh, each of these values, notice this encrypt uh, column here, I can encrypt each one of these values if I want. Um, I'm choosing to leave it in uh, clear text here, but I will uh, go ahead and uh, save my password uh, as uh, encrypted. And the search base for VIS is default is DC VIS, DC equals net. I could put a filter here if needed. Most of the time, that's going to be blank. Uh, this will all have been set from uh, configuration time. This is the uh, Viz config or the Atom instance, ADLVS, that we're using to store the dynamic groups, auto groups. The SMTP host name, uh, email account. So this is uh, for those actions within the management console to email and do email notifications. Also for the support actions within uh, the console, which is covered in a different how-to series of how to contact support and, and send log files in directly from the console here. Uh, so uh, this sales at optimalidm.com is whatever account you want from those CPAs that you set up um, to be the email uh, alias. And then here's the SMTP, so your local SMTP that you would use. Uh, email subject is the subject line. could be whatever you want. defaults to this. Uh, email admin notification is who's the admin account that would receive the summary of what was done. So this could be an email uh, group listing or a, a DL if you had uh, that you wanted to do. And then this is the encryption key uh, that is used. You can generate a new key. Most of the time you'd leave that default. The reporting dashboard URL here, that is the URL if you click this button that it would go to. And so by default it says uh, localhost VIS uh, default. So whatever the name of the server and the full URL for this reporting dashboard. Likewise, the uh, LDAP manager path down here, and you can see it's going back one directory of this base install to LDAP manager uh, and the LDAP manager uh, exe. That is the button uh, that's shown on this main screen as well. I'm going to leave this up for the second. Um, that launches uh, LDAP Manager as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and configure uh, those services. So I mentioned that these weren't showing up here. And I'm going to choose the service name. So um, just scroll down on the list, choose Virtual Identity Server for that. The Persisted Cache uh, is the Virtual Identity Server Persisted Cache. And we're going to go ahead and click Save and notice they're already showing up. So VIS uh, shows up as running uh, with the green. Uh, Persistent Cache is stopped currently. And of course, I can stop the service directly right here from uh, the management console. I could also go down to Control Panel Services. I can do a restart of the service, which does a stop and a start. And I could also restart the service clear trace files. Uh, if I did that, that will actually clear any of the trace logs that we have set up here. So you have VIS server log 1, 2, 3. It would actually scroll through and delete all of those, uh, every single one that's in there. And now you can do view VIS trace file, which opens up Notepad to the most current one, so that you can take a look at the trace. We'll cover logging in a separate how-to series, uh, how to look at logging, uh, configure logging. So uh, let's jump over here now to manage app config files. So this allows you uh, each service, the virtual identity server, uh, actually each application within VIS, the management console as well, has an app.config file written in .NET. 
and you can choose the logging level of each of these applications. So right from the interface here, I can choose to give an application such as VIS. I can choose debug. I'm currently running in a debug logging. Uh, info, warn, fatal, uh, and error. So depending upon what level of logging you want to see. I'm in a development machine here, so I want debug. I want the most amount of information in that trace file that we see here. So I'm in the, uh, the, the highest level of logging. You can choose a location. So this could be local, as you can see here, relative uh, local machine. It could be out to a server uh, share, uh, wherever you want it to be. Uh, the processor priority, what uh, priority do you want? You know, high, real time, uh, above normal? Above normal is probably a pretty good set, uh, setting for this uh, development server as well. And then which uh, viz config XML file? So the management console here can manage any XML file. Which one am I currently using? And you can, of course, click the ellipses here to choose a different XML file. But I am using the viz config that's in the uh, config folder right uh, here. And one thing to note, every, every time you go make a change inside here and actually choose the save XML feature, it does back up your XML file with a date timestamp with a unique GUID so you can easily roll back to a prior version. Now again, that doesn't do it when you click save within each setting, it's when you do the save XML. That forces the change, will rewrite the file um, with a date timestamp backup so you can easily roll back to a prior uh, version of the XML file as well. The uh, next link over here is an encryption utility so that you can encrypt any data using a, a given key. This is a link directly to our website so that you have quick easy access to the website. Um, VIS Health Check is covered in another how-to series about how to uh, set up some monitoring of the system. And then there's a Help About, which also does show the current version, and Support Actions, which is covered in a separate how-to series. So we wanted to cover a couple of the basics of administrating uh, VIS. Uh, please look to the other how-to series for help in administering your virtual identity server deployment. Thank you.